In this video we're going to make a boat that you can uh, hop into and drive around. So I've made this scene with some water. Uh, if you're wondering how to make the water, it's assets, import package, water basic, and then import. And then down here on, where is it? Standard assets, water. We've got uh, the two waters and you know you just raise it to a height you like um, put it at zero zero for x and z and then make it a lot bigger so that's the water we've got and I also found a boat so in assets I made a folder called meshes uh, boat so I have this boat and I just you know googled free 3d models and found a boat uh, and this has no texture, so I can just click and drag, and that usually works. So that's eh, not great, actually, but really doesn't matter. Um, so this is the mesh. I also actually want an empty container for this, an empty game object, because there's a difference between the boat brain and what the boat looks like. So this over here is the, what the boat looks like. So we want to do game object, create empty, we're going to call it boat and now we're going to click here this is our boat appearance and put it into boat so now and also uh, the appearance should be at zero 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 and our boat now so only move there we go so now we only want to move boat we don't want to move the appearance here we just want to move boat. So that's really because the appearance is, might need to be rotated. You know, if it's at zero, it's going to be like this. And it's going to be hard to work with steering if we do it like that. So we're going to work with steering on the empty container boat that's at zero, zero, zero rotation. It's much easier. You also need a collider to so we don't just pass through the boat. So. You click on the appearance one, the one that has the mesh renderer, and we're going to add mesh collider. So you can only add a mesh collider to something with a mesh renderer. Now when I press play, I can hop in and that's it. So now we want to, when we hop in, I want to press a button and lock into the boat and then steer around. So we're going to make a new script and assets, scripts, in really any folder, uh, create, right click, create C sharp script, call it boat controller, and open that up to edit it. Okay, so you can just ignore this line, that's just me. So, what we need to do is we need to get control of the player and the movement, because when we're in the boat and we press forward, we don't want the player to go forward. So, there's the character controller, we need a character motor and we need the actual player. So this is the character controller will have information about us moving. The character motor has, you know, we can change how we're moving or change our controls. And this is the actual player with everything in it. So when we start, we need to make CC. We need to find the find object of type character controller. So there should really only be one of these in the whole game. That's the only way this is going to work. And it will work because that's all we have for our player. So we have a character controller, character motor. The player is going to be the game object that's attached to the character motor we just found. So if we go here, player, character controller, and character motor, they're both here. And they're attached to the player. So now that we've got... CM, we can get player as well. Now one thing we're going to need to do, just like how the appearance of the boat is inside our boat container, when the player jumps on the boat, we're going to want to attach the player like this, so that the boat will then contain both the player and the appearance of the boat. And when we get off, the player is going to get off and exit the boat so now when we move the boat we don't move the player the player is still there we move the boat player is still there
So we want to do that, but during the game. So we're going to have to keep track of whatever the player is attached to now, and we're going to have to keep attach that to the boat. So um, that's going to be, and I'll show you how to do this. It's it's just like this. Um, default player, I don't know, transform. I could have called that anything. It's just a transform. The transform is how you talk about these containers. So the default transform is going to be what it starts at. The parent is whatever container is it starts at. So now we need to make a function that checks if we're close to the boat. So is player close to boat? And bool means it'll give back yes or no, true or false. And we're going to say, uh, we're going to get the distance between us and the player. So the boat is going to be here. Oh, wait a sec. Vector3. So Vector3 has a bunch of functions to help us with this. Distance is one. And it takes two vectors. It'll take our position of the boat and also the player position. So this will be a number. It could be one, it could be a thousand. It's how far we are from the boat. I'm going to say we're close if it's less than one. So we're going to return if our distance is less than one. So if it's 0.5, we're really close. Is player close? Yes. It'll say yes. So in update, we're going to say, I want to press a key to get on the boat. So input dot get key down. Key code is going to be E, I guess. So if we press E and we're close to the boat, then I want to do some stuff here. Okay, so we're actually going to make a, hmm, a new Boolean to keep track of is driving. Are we driving? We'll start at false. And we're going to make a new function as well called set driving and it'll accept is driving. Okay, so when we set driving, actually, and down here we're going to set driving to not is driving. So this will toggle whether we're driving. If we press E and we're close to the boat, we're going to set driving to not is driving. So if we are driving, if this is true, it's going to set this to not true. Not is the exclamation. So not true, and it'll be set to not true. If it was false, then it'll be not false, which is true. So this here is the same as this. So that's how that's working. So it'll toggle is driving. And then here we can write all the code that'll be whether we're attached or not. So CM, we got to turn off our players that uh, that's moving and turn off the controls so we can't, oh, not false. There we go. So if we're driving, so if this is true, we want to turn this off. So true, we want to turn it to false. So we're turning this off. If we're not driving, if this is false, then we actually want to turn on our controls because we're not driving and we're walking around. CM is walking around. Finally, we have to put the player in the right container. So if is driving, then the player.transform.parent will be, so if we're driving, we want it to be the boat. Whoops. It's actually just game object, because this is our self. The boat controller is attached to the script. Boat controller is attached to the boat. So game object is the boat. However, if we're not driving, that's what this is. If we are driving, do this. If we're not, then we're parent is our default player. There we go. So we'll save this and give it a shot. We go back here. We need to attach boat controller to the boat. Make sure it's the boat container, not the boat appearance. 
Now when we press play, I'm hopping around and stuff, but I go in the boat, and when I press E, now I'm locked. I'm trying to walk right now and, and jump. It's not working, but that's, that's good. I press E, and I'm free again. So now we can use WASD to move the boat. And we're going to take advantage of Unity. Uh, they set us up with some physics. We're also, on the boat, going to add component rigid body. So now, actually, I'll just to show, I'll raise this up a, a bit. The boat's going to fall, right? Cause, but it's going to fall through the floor as well. There's no collider. That's OK. I just want to use the rigid body so I can apply physics forces and stuff to it. That's OK. We don't want it to fall, though. We could turn off gravity, but if something hits it, it's going to fly away weirdly. So these, are, these constraints are useful. I'm going to freeze the Y position. And I'm also going to freeze these rotations, because we don't ever really, this is kind of complicated if the boat starts doing stuff like that. We're really going to keep it so it can only rotate like this. So in the update code, we're going to write if is driving. And all of this space here is going to be for if we're driving. We have to do a bunch of stuff. So first, we're going to check if we want forward thrust. That's if we're moving forward or backwards. So it'll be start at zero. If input dot get key. Uh, we don't want to do get key down because that would do it just once. If we hold forward, we want to keep doing forward. Okay, key code is W. So if we press W, forward thrust will be three. If we press S, is back, it'll be negative one. And same thing for the sideways. This will be turn thrust, starts at zero. If we press A or D, it'll be one or negative one. So here we need to apply our forward thrust. We're going to use our rigid body that we added. And we're going to say add force. Now we need a direction and a power. So forward thrust is only a power. We got three if it's forward and minus one power if it's backwards. We need a direction. And the direction, if this is our boat from the top, the direction is we want it to be like this. And you can get this sort of direction from that boat container. It always knows what, what forward is. So if, I, if we come at a different angle, then we need to change this, this vector. Well, we always can find out what it is. All that is is our game object has a transform, and you can just say forward. So this is the unit vector in the direction that whatever is forward. We're going to multiply it by forward thrust. So it's no longer going to be a unit vector. It'll get a little bigger if it's 3 or, or whatever. So that'll add that forward force. Now we need to use the turn thrust. So that's going to be rigid body. Instead of a force, you could apply a force like to the side, like twisting it around. But we're going to do a torque, adding a relative torque. Now the way a torque works is it's going to be a, a vector again. And if we want to rotate the boat like this, it's going to be using the y-axis, the um, this axis here that moves up and down. We're going to be rotating around that as though it were a pole we're rotating around. So we're going to rotate like that. And the vector, if it's long, if it's long like this, it will rotate fast. If it's just a shorter one, it'll rotate a little slower. So this is that torque we're going to add. The direction, like I said, was up. Okay, so vector 3 up is just a default thing. This is, again, a unit vector. So the magnitude is 1. So we need to make uh, the amount is going to be times the oops, turn. Oh, look at that. There's a problem up here. This shouldn't be forward thrust either. It should be turn thrust. There we go. Times turn thrust. So it'll be times 1 or negative 1. 
So if we save it and press play, and we hop in the boat, press E, uh, oh, there you go. So now we're in the boat and we press forward, we go forward, back, we slowly slow down. And if I turn right, well, right is left, okay, whatever. Um, yeah, so there you go. One thing that's going to be a problem is we can start going really fast and faster and faster because we're applying a force and there's no limit to it. It just keeps adding more of a force and you will keep accelerating and accelerating forever. So that's a problem. Um, I'm going to make this two. Is player close to boat? Just so it's easier to hop in. Um, we're going to want to make our velocity, give it a max. This is called a clamp. Um, so we're going to set our velocity is going to equal, we're going to use a function in the vector three called clamp magnitude. We're going to give it that same thing, the velocity vector, and we're going to clamp it to five. So what this will do is it'll take, um, if the velocity, the magnitude's greater than five, what it's going to do is it'll take the unit vector of this, multiply it by five, and give us that. So this will never be greater than five now. So that's good. Uh, another thing is, if we have a look at our boat, it is perfectly still, uh, which is kind of weird. So I'm going to make it go up and down, bob up and down. Um, at the top, float start y. So this will be keep track of our where we start in our y position. It's going to be whoops, dot y. Because as we change our y, we need to remember what it was originally. And we're going to do that down here. So our we're going to make a new position equals. It's going to be just our normal position wherever we are. But the y is going to equal our start y plus we're going to use some trig sign. We're going to give it a uh, time since level load. And we're going to set our position to that. So now when we have a look at the boat, it is going up and down, though it is going up and down too much and it's too fast. So you know your trig, you can just take this sign right here uh, and make it not as high and make it faster. And there you go. Now it's going up and down, looks a lot nicer and you can hop in and zip around in your boat. Oh, my left and right are still messed up. So just right here, there we go. One to negative one and negative one to one. Now we're good. Hop in, press E, and you can steer. And if I go forward a lot, I never really go super fast. It'll all kind of make sense. And we can ride off into the sunset. Wow.